Eager to give a retired police dog a loving home, a family welcomed their new furry member with open arms. However, almost immediately, the dog displayed an unusual fixation. Every day, without fail, it would stand beneath the attic hatch, its bark echoing with an intensity that hinted at something more than just an ordinary canine curiosity. The family soon realised that the dog might be onto something hidden in the recesses of their home. Sammy continued barking at the attic hatch for days, and at first, her owners thought it was just the howling of the wind that scared her. However, even after the storm passed, Sammy would not stop barking. They understood that they had no other choice but to go into the attic and see what was going on. They expected to find a mouse or a bird in there since they hadn't used the attic for years. However, when they finally climbed inside, it became clear that it was something much more serious. Oh no! We have to call the police right now! They exclaimed, shocked by this unexpected discovery. As soon as the officers arrived, it became clear that there was going to be a police investigation. It appeared that Sammy had one last job before going into retirement. But why was Sammy barking so much? What did they find in the attic? And why did the police need to investigate it? Welcome to Wonderbot Animals. Joshua and Rebecca had always wanted to adopt a dog, and when the opportunity presented itself to adopt a retired police dog, they took it with both hands. Rebecca's grandfather was a police officer, and whenever she visited him at the police station, she got to play with some of the dogs they worked with. It was really a core memory for her, and because her grandfather had recently passed away, she saw this as a way to honour her memory of him. They immediately completed the adoption application and answered all kinds of questions about their living situation, their previous experience with dogs and so on. Rebecca had worked at a doggy daycare, so she knew plenty about dogs and how to take care of them. Sure enough, they passed the first part of the adoption process and they were ready to plan a home visit. The visit went great and the dog, Sammy, did not even pay any attention to the attic hatch at all. There was not a single weird thing about her behaviour and the adoption agency was quite happy with the visit. Sammy spent most of her time running around in the garden and playing with her potential new owner's son, Zeke, and afterward she fell asleep on the couch. She looked very comfortable in the home already and everything seemed perfect. A few weeks later, Rebecca and Joshua officially adopted Sammy, and she started her retirement with her new family. They spent a lot of time playing with her, and they continued training and practicing with her. This way, she would not get bored, and it would also help with her transition to this new, calmer part of her life. Sammy seemed to be enjoying her new lifestyle, and she did not have a lot of trouble adjusting to her new home. However, one day, something strange. Joshua had been playing fetch with Sammy inside the house, and suddenly, she just disappeared. He called her a couple of times and even shook her bowl with food to get her attention, but she still did not return to him. This was very odd, because until then, Sammy had never ignored an order from any of them, not even little Zeke. So, Joshua obviously needed to investigate. He walked into the hallway, which was where Sammy had disappeared, but she wasn't there. The ball they had been playing fetch with, however, was. Joshua called out to Sammy again, and he suddenly heard her whining softly. He looked around, wondering where the sound was coming from, but he couldn't see her. And then he realized that she had gone upstairs, which surprised him even more. Sammy was not allowed to go to the first floor, and she knew this very well. However, now she had broken that rule and she was sitting in the middle of the upstairs hallway. She looked very tense and extremely focused on one single thing, the attic hatch. Joshua started laughing and said, You silly dog, don't be scared, that's just the wind. Come, let's go play again, where's the ball? He thought Sammy was staring at the attic hatch because it was storming outside and the wind was blowing so hard that it made a howling sound. However, that was not what had caught Sammy's attention at all, but he would only find out the truth a couple of days later. Sammy stayed behind, but after a couple of minutes, she followed Joshua down the stairs. He thought that was it, and it was just a one-time experience, but he was wrong. The following days, even after the storm passed, 
they found Sammy staring at that same attic hatch several times. They hadn't opened that hatch in years, and they just assumed that she had heard a mouse walking around up there. However, one day, Sammy even started barking at the hatch. No matter what Joshua and Rebecca did, she wouldn't stop. They realized that there was only one thing they could do, and that was to go into the attic and find out what Sammy was barking at. Rebecca prepared some mouse traps for Joshua to leave there, and he carefully opened the hatch. A cloud of dust came falling down from the opening in the ceiling, and Joshua pulled down the stairs. He climbed up the wooden and shaky stairs, one creaking step at a time. The whole time, Sammy sat next to the stairs, whining and occasionally barking. When Joshua finally climbed high enough to take a look into the attic, he gasped at what he saw. Honey, he called out to Rebecca, you can forget about those mouse traps." But what had he found? Rebecca ran upstairs and followed him onto the stairs and into the attic, and then they were both standing there, staring at the discovery. We have to call the police, she whispered. Joshua looked at her and responded, I know, but what should we tell them? Rebecca sighed and said, Well, the truth, obviously. What else can we do? The couple walked back down the stairs and they both petted Sammy, telling her that she was such a good girl. It's crazy how she picked up on that, don't you think? Joshua asked his wife. Yeah, but that literally used to be her job. She still hasn't lost it, she replied. Sammy still looked a bit stressed, so Rebecca got down on her knees next to her to calm her down. While Rebecca focused on Sammy, Joshua called the police. He listened to the ringing tone for a while until someone picked up the phone and said, Hello, this is the Rosewood Police Department. How can I help you? Joshua explained the situation, and he also made sure to mention that Sammy had actually made the discovery. The dispatcher told Joshua she would send Sammy's old handler, Officer Daniels, over to their house to check it out. Not much later, Officer Daniels arrived at their house. Sammy had already started whining and barking even before he even rang the doorbell. She must have recognised his scent. When Joshua finally let the officer inside, Sammy greeted him by jumping around him very excitedly and she immediately pushed him towards the stairs, eager to show her old owner what she had found this time. Joshua showed the officer upstairs and he opened the attic hatch again, pulling down the stairs for the second time in one day after not even having touched it in years. It's up there, he said, gesturing to Officer Daniels that he could climb up first and he would follow him. All right, let's take a look, the officer said as he climbed into the attic. As soon as he looked around the space, he said, Well, Joshua, it's good that you called. This is serious. You see, one of the windows in the attic was broken. It could have happened because of the storm, of course, but there was one big reason why they all thought that someone else had done it on purpose. There was a big suitcase in the attic. Neither Rebecca nor Joshua had ever seen it before, and they thought that someone had broken into their attic to leave that suitcase there. But who and why? That's what the police were going to find out. The morning sun cast a golden hue on the Rosewood Police Department as Officer Daniels carefully placed the mysterious suitcase into the evidence room. The weight of the case was palpable, not just in its physical heft, but in the myriad questions it posed. Where did you come from? Daniels whispered, as if expecting the suitcase to answer. The dim room, filled with other remnants of unsolved cases, seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the story to unfold. In the tech room, a bank of screens displayed footage from various neighbourhood cameras. Officers, coffee mugs in hand, meticulously scanned each frame. The storm from the previous night had distorted some of the footage, but they hoped for a clear shot of the intruder. Every car, pedestrian and stray cat was noted, time-stamped and cross-referenced. There has to be something here, murmured Officer Martinez, her eyes never leaving the screens. By midday, a team of officers, including Daniels, fanned out across the neighbourhood. They knocked on doors, introduced themselves and posed their questions. Most residents were helpful, trying to recall any odd events or unfamiliar faces. Mrs Henderson, an elderly woman with sharp eyes, mentioned a strange noise late at night, 
but without more concrete evidence, it was just another piece of the puzzle. Days turned into nights, and the leads grew cold. The neighbourhood's collective memory yielded no significant clues. The police had a broken window, a mysterious suitcase, and a family shaken by the intrusion. But the intruder remained a shadow, a ghost that had slipped through the cracks. The frustration was evident in the station's atmosphere, a mix of determination and the nagging fear of an unsolved case. Back at the family's home, Joshua and Rebecca tried to maintain a sense of normalcy for Zeke's sake, but every creak of the house, every rustle of leaves outside, sent their hearts racing. They placed their trust in the police, hoping the examination of the suitcase would provide answers. At the station, the forensic team worked diligently, dusting for fingerprints and examining its contents. As the days passed, everyone hoped for that one breakthrough that would shed light on the mystery. The sun was beginning its descent when a familiar knock echoed through Joshua and Rebecca's home. Opening the door, they were met with the stern yet comforting face of Officer Daniels. His presence was both reassuring and foreboding. Good evening, he greeted, his eyes briefly darting to Sammy, who wagged her tail in recognition. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation, hinting at the gravity of his visit. Clearing his throat, Daniels began, I know this might be an unusual request, but we're at a bit of a standstill with the case. He paused, glancing once more at Sammy, who sat attentively by Rebecca's side. We were wondering if Sammy could assist us, just one more time. Her skills might be the key to unlocking this mystery. His voice held a mix of hope and desperation. Joshua and Rebecca exchanged a hesitant glance. The thought of thrusting Sammy back into the world she had left behind was daunting. But the weight of the unresolved case pressed heavily on them. If it'll help find answers, Rebecca began, her voice wavering, then yes. Joshua nodded in agreement, placing a comforting hand on Sammy's head. They hoped this decision would lead to closure. The moment Officer Daniels mentioned the investigation, a spark ignited in Sammy's eyes. It was as if she understood the gravity of the situation and was ready to step up. Her tail wagged faster and she let out an eager bark, sensing the adventure ahead. The family couldn't help but smile at her enthusiasm. Even in retirement, her dedication to duty was undeniable. The next morning, the family's driveway was graced by a familiar police car. As Officer Daniels stepped out, Sammy rushed to greet him, her joy evident. The bond between the two was unmistakable. With a nod from Joshua and Rebecca, Daniels attached a special harness to Sammy, signalling her role. Together, the duo prepared to delve back into the investigative world, hoping to bring peace to a family and a community on edge. The familiar hum of the police station greeted Sammy as she walked through its doors. Officers paused in their tasks, smiles forming as they recognised the retired police dog. Whispers of, Sammy's back, echoed through the corridors. For Sammy, the polished floors and the scent of old cases brought a rush of memories. It was as if she had never left and the station had been waiting for her return. In a quiet room, the mysterious suitcase lay on a table, its contents a puzzle waiting to be solved. Officer Daniels gestured for Sammy to approach. With a focused intensity, she sniffed the suitcase, her nostrils flaring. Each scent was a piece of information, a potential lead. The room's occupants watched in silence, understanding that this moment was crucial to the investigation. With the scent locked in her memory, Sammy's posture shifted. She was no longer the relaxed family dog, but a detective with a mission. Leading Officer Daniels, she began her search, moving with purpose through the station and out into the streets. Every turn, every pause was dictated by the invisible trail she was following, a trail only she could sense. From a distance, Joshua, Rebecca and a few officers trailed behind, their hopes pinned on Sammy's keen senses. The town's familiar landmarks passed by, but the destination remained unknown. Each step was a mix of hope and anxiety. Where is she leading us? Rebecca whispered to Joshua, her hand gripping his. The journey felt endless, yet every moment was charged with anticipation. 
the path Sammy took was winding and unpredictable. Through alleyways, past parks and down residential streets, she moved with unwavering confidence. Yet, for those following, the destination remained a mystery. Doubts began to creep in. Was the trail growing cold? Or was Sammy on the brink of a significant discovery? With every step, the tension grew and the question loomed. Where would the trail end? In the sterile environment of the evidence room, the suitcase sat, an enigma waiting to be deciphered. With gloved hands, Officer Daniels carefully undid the latches. The room's atmosphere was thick with anticipation. As the lid lifted, the contents were finally exposed to the waiting eyes, revealing a sight that no one had truly expected. Beneath the lid, neatly stacked bundles of cash lay in organized rows. The green hues of the bills contrasted sharply with the dark interior of the suitcase. The sheer volume was staggering. Whispers filled the room as officers tried to estimate the value. This isn't just a small theft, murmured one detective. This is something much bigger. The serial numbers on the bills were quickly cross-referenced. It didn't take long for the police to confirm their suspicions. The money was stolen, but the origin remained elusive. No recent bank heists or large-scale thefts had been reported in the area. The question hung heavily in the air. Where had such a significant sum come from? The mystery only deepened as the forensic team went to work. The suitcase yielded no fingerprints, no stray hairs, no fibres, nothing. It was as if it had been packed and placed by a ghost. The lack of evidence was both frustrating and intriguing. Whoever did this knew what they were doing, Officer Daniels mused, staring at the enigmatic suitcase. Back at their home, Joshua and Rebecca sat in their living room, the weight of the day's events pressing down on them. When Officer Daniels relayed the discovery of the money, their faces registered shock and disbelief. Why our attic? Rebecca whispered, her voice tinged with fear. Joshua wrapped an arm around her, equally baffled. The implications of the find were vast, and the couple grappled with the reality that their home had become the centre of a major investigation. The once comforting walls of their home now felt like they concealed secrets. Each creak and groan of the house was a reminder of the unknown intruder's presence. Joshua and Rebecca sat together, trying to process the reality that their sanctuary had been violated. Why us? Rebecca murmured, her eyes filled with unease. The weight of the stolen money, hidden so close to their lives, pressed heavily on their minds. Determined to regain a sense of safety, Joshua began researching home security systems. We need to be proactive, he declared, scrolling through reviews of the latest security cameras. Rebecca nodded in agreement. We can't let fear dictate our lives. Within days, cameras were installed at every entry point, their blinking lights a small beacon of hope in their quest for peace. The nights were the hardest. Shadows seemed to dance menacingly, and every sound was amplified. Rebecca would often wake up, thinking she heard footsteps, only to find it was the wind or the house settling. Joshua, too, found solace in late-night cups of tea, staring out into the darkness, wondering if the intruder was out there, watching. Their once peaceful home was now a place of restless vigil. Sammy, sensing the heightened tension, became the family's watchful guardian. She'd patrol the house, her ears perked up, listening intently. At the slightest unfamiliar noise, she'd growl softly, her eyes scanning for threats. Her protective nature intensified and she often positioned herself by Zeke's bedroom door, standing guard. Her loyalty and heightened senses provided a layer of comfort in uncertain times. Days turned into a blur of routines, punctuated by moments of anxiety. Zeke, sensing the change, clung closer to his parents, often asking if the bad person would come back. Joshua and Rebecca tried to maintain a semblance of normalcy, organising family game nights and movie marathons. But the undercurrent of unease was undeniable. The family, bound by love, faced the challenge head-on, determined to reclaim their sense of security. With the scent of the suitcase fresh in her nostrils, Sammy's demeanour shifted. Every fibre of her being was attuned to the task ahead. 
Her eyes, sharp and focused, scanned the surroundings, and with a determined gait, she began her pursuit. Officer Daniels, tethered to her by a leash, marvelled at her precision. The retired police dog was in her element, and the chase was on. The streets of the town unfurled before them as Sammy led the way. She darted down alleyways, paused at crossroads, and doubled back on herself more than once. The trail was unpredictable, weaving through parks, bustling marketplaces, and quiet residential areas. Those following her, Officer Daniels, Joshua, Rebecca, and a few other officers, were kept on their toes, trying to anticipate her next move. As hours passed, a growing sense of déjà vu settled upon the group. The landmarks started to look familiar, the streets reminiscent of their earlier journey. Isn't this... Rebecca began, her voice trailing off as realisation dawned. The path Sammy was taking was leading them back towards their own home. The twist was unexpected, and a murmur of confusion rippled through the group. The closer they got to Joshua and Rebecca's house, the more the atmosphere grew tense. Whispers and exchanged glances hinted at the rising doubts. Why would she lead us back here? Joshua muttered, his brow furrowed. Officer Daniels, though trusting Sammy's instincts, couldn't help but feel a pang of suspicion. Had they missed something? Was the answer closer than they had imagined? The final steps of their journey culminated at the very doorstep of the family's home. Sammy stopped, her nose pointed towards the entrance, her tail wagging slowly. She let out a soft whine, looking up at Officer Daniels with earnest eyes. The group stood in stunned silence the weight of the moment pressing down on them. The trail had ended, but the mystery had deepened, leaving more questions than answers. Standing at the doorstep, Officer Daniels felt a whirlwind of emotions. He had trusted Sammy's instincts throughout her service, but this outcome was baffling. The implications were grave. Could the family he had grown fond of be involved in this mystery? His duty as an officer demanded he pursue the truth, but his personal connection to the family and Sammy made the situation all the more complex. Taking a deep breath, Daniels turned to Joshua and Rebecca. I need to know if there's anything you're not telling me, he began, his voice firm. The couple looked taken aback. Why would we call the police if we were involved? Rebecca retorted, her eyes flashing with indignation. Joshua trying to keep the peace, added, We're as confused as you are, officer. The atmosphere grew thick with tension. We've been transparent from the start, Joshua continued, his voice shaking slightly. Our home was violated, and we're victims here too. Rebecca nodded in agreement, her arms wrapped protectively around Zeke, who watched the exchange with wide eyes. The couple's sincerity was evident, but the situation's oddity left room for doubt. Daniels, torn between his duty and the trust he had for the family, took a moment before speaking. If there's anything you're hiding, any detail, no matter how small, you must share it now, he cautioned. The consequences could be severe otherwise. His gaze then shifted to Sammy, who sat quietly, her loyalty to both her former handler and her new family evident. The events of the day had strained the bond between Officer Daniels, the family, and Sammy. Trust, once given freely, now hung in the balance. The family felt the weight of suspicion, while Daniels grappled with the duality of his role. And in the midst of it all, Sammy, the loyal dog, hoped for a resolution that would keep her newfound family intact. In the dim glow of their living room, Joshua and Rebecca huddled around their computer, accessing the feed from their newly installed security cameras. With bated breath, they began to review the recordings, hoping to find some clue that might shed light on the mystery. Each frame was scrutinised and every movement was analysed. The night's events played out before them, revealing more than they had initially perceived. As they fast-forwarded through hours of footage, a particular segment caught their attention. A shadowy figure, barely discernible in the dim light, moved stealthily around their property. The intruder's face was obscured, making identification impossible. But their intent was clear. This was the person who had left the suitcase. The couple exchanged worried glances, realising the gravity of their discovery. With notepads in hand, 
Joshua and Rebecca began to piece together a timeline of the intruders' actions. The figures' movements were methodical, suggesting they were familiar with the property. Could it be someone we know? Rebecca pondered aloud. Joshua shook his head. It doesn't make sense. Why our house? The puzzle was intricate, and each piece only added to their confusion. After hours of analysis, a bold idea began to form. What if we confront this person, Joshua suggested, determination evident in his voice. Rebecca hesitated. It's risky, but we need answers. They decided to set a trap using the suitcase as bait. If the intruder returned, they would be ready. With a plan in place, they prepared for a confrontation that could change everything. Night fell and the couple took their positions. The house was silent, save for the occasional rustling of leaves outside. Hours seemed to stretch endlessly until a faint noise broke the stillness. The shadowy figure was back. As the intruder approached the suitcase, Joshua and Rebecca emerged from the shadows, their faces set with determination. Who are you? What do you want? Joshua demanded, seeking the truth behind the enigma. As the dim light fell upon the intruder's face, Joshua and Rebecca gasped in disbelief. It was Michael, their seemingly unassuming neighbour. The realisation hit them like a ton of bricks. Michael? Rebecca exclaimed, her voice a mix of shock and betrayal. The man before them, with whom they'd shared casual greetings and neighbourhood barbecues, was the last person they'd have suspected. With his secret exposed, Michael's shoulders slumped in defeat. I never meant for any of this to happen, he began, his voice shaky. He explained the mounting debts, the pressure, and the opportunity that presented itself at work. Stealing the money had seemed like the only way out. I thought hiding it in the attic would buy me some time, he admitted, regret evident in his eyes. As the story unfolded, one detail became clear. Michael had taken advantage of the shared roof structure to access the attic. I knew you rarely used it, he confessed. It seemed like the perfect hiding spot. The interconnected attics, a quirk of the neighbourhood's architecture, had facilitated his clandestine operation, allowing him to move the money without ever entering their home directly. Everything began to fall into place. The odd behaviour Sammy had exhibited, her focus on the attic, her unease, it all made sense now. She had sensed Michael's intrusion from the very beginning. She knew, Joshua murmured, looking down at their loyal dog with newfound admiration. Sammy's instincts, honed from her years of service, had been spot on. Facing the consequences of his actions, Michael's facade crumbled. I'm so sorry, he whispered, tears forming in his eyes. I never wanted to involve you or your family. The weight of his choices, the betrayal of trust, and the ripple effects of his actions were all too apparent. As the police arrived to take him into custody, the neighbourhood's tranquility was forever shattered by the revelation of a neighbour's regret. Whispers spread like wildfire through the neighbourhood. Front porch conversations, usually filled with mundane chatter, were now dominated by the startling revelation about Michael. To think he lived right next door, Mrs. Thompson murmured, shaking her head in disbelief. The tight-knit community, once marked by trust and camaraderie, grappled with the unsettling knowledge that one of their own had harboured such a secret. Amidst the turmoil, one hero emerged, Sammy. The local newspaper ran a front-page story titled Retired Police Dog Cracks Unsuspected Case detailing her instrumental role in uncovering the truth. Neighbours would stop by, offering treats and praises, lauding her keen instincts. The once-working dog, now in her golden years, basked in the adulation, her tail wagging with pride. The strain between Joshua, Rebecca and Officer Daniels was palpable. However, recognising the unique circumstances, they decided to meet over coffee. We were all caught off guard, Daniels admitted his voice softening. The trio shared their perspectives, understanding the pressures each faced. By the end of the conversation, the foundation for renewed trust was laid, with hope for a stronger bond in the future. 
One evening, as the sun cast a golden hue across the room, Joshua and Rebecca sat with Sammy between them. We owe you so much, Rebecca whispered, stroking Sammy's fur. The couple reflected on the roller coaster of events, realizing that without Sammy, the truth might have remained hidden. Their gratitude for her unwavering loyalty knew no bounds. With the mystery unraveled and peace restored, life began to find its rhythm again. Sammy, having had her moment back in the limelight, settled into the comforts of retirement. She'd spend her days lounging in the sun, playing with Zeke and enjoying long walks with her family. The bond between Sammy and her family grew even stronger, a testament to the love and trust they shared.